It's Wednesday, the 4th of October. It's time for a quick Oroville update. They've got just four weeks left before that uh, November 1st deadline of having an operational 100,000 CFS spillway in place at Oroville. So let's listen into the press briefing where they say they are still on track to meet that deadline. And then we'll look at some DWR drone footage shot or posted on 3 October. My name's Juan Brown and you're watching the Blanco Area Channel. Resources update on the Lake Orville Spillways Emergency Recovery Project Conference. I'll kick it back to you and we'll open it up for questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you do wish to ask a question, please signal by pressing our one on your telephone keypad. First question comes from Juan Brown with the Union Newspaper Grass Valley. Morning. Is this about the biggest uh, use of RCC in a spillway to date? I'd have to check that, but maybe Jeff has a better idea. But I would say certainly considering this is the tallest dam in the U.S., I would imagine so. But we can go through a couple of other construction projects to see how it compares. We can talk to Mike Rogers. And... Um, with with uh, the extensive use of RCC just for this year, is there an opportunity in the new plan? Are you discussing the possibility of, uh, well, depending on how the water season ends up this year, uh, to run some water down through the new spillway this year and get some data on how the RCC responds? Um, our, our current operations plan is, of course, like you know, to drop the lake level. Um, at 700, you won't have the ability to use the spillway, even if you wanted to. The spillway gates are, I think I want to say, 813 elevation. Um, I, our plan is not to utilize the spillway this year so that we can ensure um, that we can keep the construction going as much as possible. Um, but I can bring that up with the construction team and, and see if they think that that would be a worthy idea. Okay. Um, yeah, I understand about the, we got to get the water level up high enough to even <laughs> begin to, the possibility of testing it. How many uh, lifts per day are you able to get in now that the area is getting a little smaller up towards the top of the RCC? Uh, we're getting really close to, yeah, we're getting really close to three feet a day. It's not, it's not quite. It's, uh, it's about a lift and a half per shift. And so within the next week, we'll be at uh, six feet a day and it'll keep increasing. And when it comes to that production, what's the limiting factor? Is it just the size of the area that you're having to work with and how much equipment you can get in that area at one time? Uh, Currently, uh, we just went through the area, the area that our batch plant is controlling the production. You can only make the RCC that fast. And as we reach the top, the wall construction will control and the size of the areas within the batch plant won't be the limiting. It'll be the, the real estate that we have to place it in. And the hardening mix, is that um, happening soon? The last layer of hard... Oh, that's right. Not until it gets all the way to the top, correct? Yeah, that's what we talked about last. As we get close to the top, we'll split the crews and we'll start the enriched uh, layer, the one foot overlay, um, back down at the bottom and work it back to the top. So that'll be within a couple weeks. And two years hence, when this is all winding up, folks are asking about the big boat ramp where the structural concrete uh, plant is. Is that all going to get rebuilt eventually? <laughs> Sure. Uh, folks are asking about the lo the big boat ramp up where the structural concrete plant is. In a couple of years, when this is all wrapped up, will that boat ramp be rebuilt or restored? Oh, I gotcha. Um, we are still looking at that and haven't made a decision as to whether it'll be opened or not. So there is a possibility that that, that may not be a boat ramp in the future? Potentially. Got it. It's certainly not going to be used while construction is underway, but um, long term we still need to assess that and uh, make a decision going forward. Got it. Okay, I'll let some other folks jump in here. Thanks, Juan. And once again, as
So the big news was they got those elevations that I was looking for on the RCC. They're currently at, um, they've got 85 feet to go. That's right, they're 595 foot elevation and uh, got to go to 680 foot elevation, leaving 85 feet to go. They're getting about two and a half to three lifts per day or almost three feet per day on the lifts. As the area gets smaller, they're able to rise faster. The limiting factors are the production of aggregate from the batch plant or the production of RCC from the batch plant and also the wall construction as well. That's what limits their production ability on the RCC section. The big boat ramp where the structural concrete plant is, that may not ever be a boat ramp again. I'm not sure what the plan is for it, but uh, they're still deciding what they're going to do with that boat ramp. It sounds like they're building a new boat ramp at a place called Loafer Creek. I'll have to figure out where that is. A new boat ramp that'll drop you down to 700 foot elevation for a year round access. Other than that, everything's on track for November 1st, 100,000 CFS. Now, I'd really hoped that they would put in the plan the ability to test run the new spillway with the RCC walls this year and get some data back on the performance of the RCC and if it suffers any cavitation or because uh, this is a historic use of RCC in a spillway construction it's certainly the biggest use of RCC and this hardening mix that they put on top is going to be some pretty new technology so it'd be really good to get some data on that RCC this year if we even get enough rain to bring the lake level up even to the bottom of the spillway. Over a half a million man hours on the job, zero injuries. Good work, Kiwit. Well, let's look over, uh, let's look at some of the recent footage here from Orville and see what it looks like. So here's what 85 feet to go looks like on the roller compacted concrete, the RCC, the top of that RCC right there, about 595 foot elevation, got to rise up to 680 feet to, mat, to meet the concrete cutoff wall above it. Getting two and a half lifts per day, here's a neat time lapse of the operation. Again, it's the construction of the RCC walls shown here and the production of RCC aggregate that controls the schedule. And here's where they're getting the final grade, the four to one slope of the spillway with the spray paint marks from the surveyor telling the grader where, whether to raise or lower his, his lift. The white on the spillway walls is to help control the curing. And there they are pumping the concrete into the wood forms for the spillway walls. Here's the scaffolding on the RCC where they're blasting shotcrete into a wire mesh. Again, maybe not even to be used this year at all. These RCC walls will be replaced with structural concrete walls next year. Backbreaking hard work. With the lake level down to near 700 feet, it's going to take a lot of rain to bring the lake even up to the bottom of the spillway gates this year. Four weeks to go to have the rest of this gap filled.